It's good to see everyone tonight. Uh, quite a switch in temperatures from uh, this time a week ago, but uh, don't get spoiled. The weatherman says Saturday is going to be cold again. Tonight we continue uh, the lessons, for lack of a better term, dealing with some of the characteristics of God. You may recall that in the last two weeks we talked about the fact that God is omnipresent, that is, God is everywhere at all times. He's not limited by space as we are. And then, of course, last week we looked at the fact that God is omniscient. He's all-knowing. He knows everything that's going on, everything there is to know. He has all knowledge. Tonight I want to look at just for a few minutes at the fact that God is omnipotent. The scriptures use the term almighty, which is the idea. And in fact, if you look up in Webster's, the word omnipotent means, quote, unlimited in power, unlimited in ability or authority, and then it gives the word almighty as a synonym. To put it simply, God has all power. There is nothing that God can't do. And throughout the scriptures, we read about God's great power, his awesome power is a term that we sometimes use today. Uh, as we look at Job 42, 4, uh, we read these words, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from thine eyes. And then later in Psalm 145, and, or excuse me, 147 and verse 5, David writes, Great is our Lord and of great power. And then the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 32 and verse 47, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. And on and on throughout the Old Testament into the New Testament. In fact, in Luke chapter 1 and verse 37, we read these words, For with God nothing shall be impossible. You know, as human beings, we are finite. We're limited. There is only so much that we can do. You know, the athlete can train and work and spend 16 hours a day working out and trying to develop his muscles. But there's a limit to what he's going to be able to do. The runner can practice and he can run day after day and he can take supplements and vitamins and do all of these things, but he's still there are limitations to how fast and how far he's going to be able to run. But there are no limitations to the power of God. God can do anything and everything that he wills to do because he is God. And certainly we live in a power-conscious world, don't we? You know, we want computers that are super powerful and fast. We like cars with, with big motors, and maybe in recent years we've kind of gotten away from that with the, uh, the price of gasoline. But we used to use the term muscle cars. And somebody say, why do you want a car with 500 horsepower? I just do. We liked it. We like power. You know, our military, we have weapons of destruction that can just literally wipe out entire cities and can kill hundreds of thousands of people. We have tremendous power. But none of these powers that we're talking about even come close to comparing with the awesome power that God has. And, and we don't have time tonight to go into them, but, but consider a God who's able to speak the universe into existence. He spoke, the heavens and the earth appeared. He spoke, the oceans appeared, the land appeared. All of the things, the plants, the animals, the vegetation, even man... God simply spoke it, and with his great power it came into existence. As we look at God's dealings with the children of Israel coming out of Egypt, not only the ten plagues were a tremendous show of the all-powerful God that we serve, but then we see him parting the sea so that Israel could cross on dry land, and then those same seas enclosed the Egyptian army, and, and they all died. We find God providing food daily for them. He gave them bread. On occasions, he gave them quail to eat. He gave them water miraculously out of the rocks. He preserved their clothing so that their shoes and their clothes didn't wear out. Over and over, he led them through the wilderness for 40 years, providing for their every need. And it was no problem for him to feed water and provide for that multitude of people. We could look at Elisha's floating axe head. In 2 Kings chapter 6, think about the power to make an axe head float to the top of the water after it's fallen in. That's an example of the power of God. And on and on we could talk about. Now, let me quickly say that the fact that God is omnipotent does not mean that God can do anything that can be said. I remember as a young boy hearing somebody say, well, can God create a rock so big that God can't lift it? And I remember hearing... A, 
A wise old man say, well, I don't know about that, but God could make a bulldozer big enough to move that rock. And I learned later in college and studying that, and you may have heard, but that involves a contradiction. God doesn't do, can't do anything that involves contradiction. God can't create an evil person. God can't lie, the scriptures say. So when we talk about God is all-powerful, there are limitations to God's ability. He can't do that which is wrong. He can't do that which is evil. He can't do that which contradicts his very nature. And sometimes atheists and agnostics enjoy trying to uh, intimidate young Christians, or not just young Christians, but Christians in general, by posing these ridiculous questions, questions that are absurdities. And so I say God can do anything that he wills to do, anything that he desires to do. And I, I can't see God having the will to do these things that we're talking about uh, that are bad. And there are other examples of the omnipotence of God we could mention, but hopefully you'll think about these things and as we study God's Word, as we read, let's give thought to the all power that God has, the ability that He has, and certainly a God who could create man, can save man and redeem man. And He did so by making the greatest sacrifice of all, the sacrifice of His Son, Jesus Christ. Tonight, if you've not been redeemed, if you have not had your sins forgiven by the blood of Christ, you can do that, coming in faith, repenting and turning from your sins, confessing His name and being baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Or, or perhaps you just need the prayers of the church. Maybe you've fallen away or have had weakness in your life that you need prayer to help with. Let us know and we can help you with that. But if you need to respond, will you come while we stand and while we sing?